A veteran coach with a new team sets a league record. Some ECHL membership changes are already set for next season. And we'll bring you up to date on all the new NHL affiliation deals for 2017-18. There's no denying that beings from all over the galaxy are excited. Why? Because Season 6 of ECHL Week starts now! Welcome to the season opening edition of ECHL Week, coming to you this time for the Huntington Center in Toledo, Ohio, home of the Toledo Walleye. Season 6 of ECHL Week begins as we take a look at history, and it involves the head coach of the Jacksonville Iceman. In the 30-year history of the ECHL, 220 men have held the title of head coach. Early this season, Jason Christie rose to the top of that list. The bench boss of the Jacksonville Iceman coached his 1,009th game in late October to pass ECHL Hall of Famer John Marks and ascend to number one on the most career games coached list. On the day he set the games coached standard, we asked about his thoughts pertaining to the record. You no, know, I don't even think of it. You know, I enjoy the game too much. The, you know, nowadays, you got to be ready. Uh, you know, there's so much that goes into it. Still learning every day, um, something new. And uh, you know, the kids nowadays, the games change. It's quick. It's fast so you got to be able to adjust on the fly and, and uh, you know it's fun uh, and that's what waking up every morning to the excitement and that new challenge. Ten years from now when you look back and what do you think about? Well hopefully I'll still be coaching you know uh, but, but you know again a uh, number of games you know it uh, started uh, a while ago with, with Don Granado you know you're sitting there your last year you're not sure what you could do after you play hockey and be able to stay in it uh, it's exciting, but uh, you know, again, John Brophy. You know what I mean, Johnny Marks. Like for me, that those two guys are uh, are top of the line for me. Uh, you know, I loved uh, playing against them, and as a player, and, and respect them what they've done as coaching. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's awesome to look back at what Brof done and. You know, this league started how it started with Mr. Kelly, and, uh, you know, that, that's what I'll look back on. Hi, I'm Clark Seymour of your Four Everblades, and you can find me on Instagram at, at Clark Thompson Seymour. In the first two months of this season, ten more players who spent time in the ECHL made a roster and played in a National Hockey League game for seven different teams. Four goaltenders, five forwards, and one defenseman have pushed the total number of ECHL alumni who have made it to the major leagues to 633, including 377 in the last 12 plus seasons. It's not too early to talk about changes for next season. The news segment is next on ECHL Week. NHL players have amazing talent and some of the very best developed right here in the ECHL. Beagles in, he scores! Now, follow all your favorite ECHL alumni every night on NHL Network's primetime hockey show, NHL Tonight. Both teams recognize how big this matchup is. Fire save by Duke Primo! Goosebump stuff. NHL Tonight, every night, 6 Eastern on NHL Network. Hi, I'm Kevin Law of the Adirondack Thunder, and you're watching ECHL Week. Even my friends from Star Wars know there's a lot of news going on in the ECHL, including a look at next year's alignment. The Colorado Eagles are competing in their seventh and final season in the ECHL. The team announced that it will be joining the American Hockey League for next season and that it will be the primary affiliate of the NHL's Colorado Avalanche. As far as the Colorado membership is concerned, efforts have started to find a relocation spot for the Eagles. A relocation spot has been found for the former Alaska Aces. That club will begin play in October of 2018 as the Maine Mariners. The team, which we'll call Portland its home, revealed its logo late last month. The Board of Governors will decide upon divisional alignments during a future meeting. An administrator, a longtime skater, and a goalie make up the 11th class of the ECHL Hall of Fame. 
Steve Chapman began his involvement with the ECHL in 1992 and continued in the league, including his time as chairman of the league's Board of Governors through 2015. Much of that time was in a management role with the Gwinnett Gladiators. He's the only person to win the ECHL Executive of the Year Award in back-to-back -back seasons. He's now in his third season as a group vice president for the NHL's St. Louis Blues. Sam Fatorik spent 14 seasons of his 17-year professional playing career in the ECHL, culminating in setting the league's all-time games played record in his final season of 2014-15. He was an all-ECHL first team member and runner-up for defenseman of the year in 2013-14. After his playing days, he served as an assistant coach with Kalamazoo and is now in his second season as the head coach of Roanoke in the Southern Professional Hockey League. Jason Saul becomes just the fourth goaltender to be selected for induction into the ECHL Hall. He ranks second among goaltenders in ECHL history with 455 career games, is fourth with 20 shutouts, and is fifth with 173 wins. He won 20 or more games five times in his ECHL career, which ranks third all-time in league history. The new Hall of Fame members will be inducted during an event on January 15th in Indianapolis in connection with the league's All-Star Classic festivities. Hi, I'm Taylor Doherty of the Atlanta Gladiators, and you're watching the number one source for ECHL news, ECHL Week. One of the teams attempting to turn things around both on and off the ice this season is the Norfolk Admirals. In two ECHL years, the ads have yet to make the playoffs. Last month, the Admirals relieved President Mike Santos of his duties and terminated their affiliation deal with the NHL's Nashville Predators and the Milwaukee Admirals of the AHL. The new man in charge of the operation of the club, Trent Ferguson, a longtime Florida Everblades front office member, recently spoke about trying to convince residents of the Hampton Roads market to come watch the Admirals play. First and foremost, it's people remembering that the Admirals are here. Um, the, it's, uh, the, the market has become complacent. Um, they've, it's been here for almost 30 years. Um, there's an assumption that it's it's just a piece of the landscape, more or less. But creating a call to action and excitement for those people to get back out, enjoy what they've been been missing, um, whether it be a cold beer on a cold night, whether it be you know just to cheer on the uh, the hometown team, um, we have to tap back into that. We have to tap back into that visceral, emotional piece of the puzzle that. You know, it is Friday night, it is Saturday night, we have to go to a hockey game. You can hear more of our conversation with Ferguson on the ECHL Week podcast, ECHL Week Speak. Find it on SoundCloud. We look at affiliation changes and run down each team's NHL and AHL partners when ECHL Week continues. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Hi, I'm Terry Ficarelli of the Indy Fuel and you're watching ECHL Week. This past summer was a busy one for ECHL clubs in terms of affiliation agreements with NHL and AHL teams. Twelve ECHL organizations started this season with different development partners than the ones they had in 2016-17. Among the notable ones, the New Jersey Devils have returned to having an ECHL affiliate, this time it's the Adirondack Thunder. Another team which added an ECHL team this year is the St. Louis Blues who have teamed with the Tulsa Oilers and the Quad City Mallards are affiliated with the NHL's newest member, the Vegas Golden Knights. Here's the rundown of every ECHL team with their NHL and AHL partners. King of 
the Wheeling Nailers, and you're watching ECHL Week. Here's a look at our highlight game of the week, featuring a couple of Eastern Conference teams. Jones hit center and got it across for Goudreau. In toward the goal, they score. What a pass, what a finish. We're back to five on five. Blocked in front of the goal, Marino pulls it away. This could be a two on one. Marino's got Petgrave, Petgrave, back to Marino. Marino, big pet save, we let's go! Alex Foster, and here come the Teddy Bears. Marino, right wing side, puts it to one of the goal, they score! Stefan Fournier breaks his stick on the play, it doesn't matter. Nice steal by Valerani, and then he comes. Valerani, there's the shot, he scores! Welcome back, David Valerani, what a snipe! Puck pulled away by Champini. Cinfrini is going to locate it, trying to muscle his way out. He gets it so far. Nice hit there, but out of the corner, they score. Tie game just like that with 2.09 to go. Reggie, a righty, has a chance to end it for Brampton. And he comes, top of the circle. He scores! Reggie Trusito, the boys are hopping off the bench. The Beast win a shootout 4-3 to three over the Worcester Railers. The ECHL reached an attendance milestone on November 11th when Kyle McGann was recognized as the 100 millionth fan to attend an ECHL game. He was given an official ECHL jersey, a season league pass, and lots of apparel by the host Kalamazoo Wings. That wraps up another edition of ECHL Week from Toledo, Ohio, our first show of season six. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow us on all our social media channels. You can keep up to date on everything that's going on in the ECHL 24-7. See you next time on December 29th.